first jank brew of the murders at Karloff standard, standard format. Uh, the, the set has been out for three days. I missed the first day of playing all together. The second day, I had a roof being replaced over my head, and so it was too loud and ruckusy to stream this. However, <laughs> I played it while the roofing was going on, and it went 9-1 in, in, in Diamond Standard Ranked. And I was so excited to stream, and then I streamed it later uh, last night, and it went 1-6 in six on stream, and then there was an issue with that stream. So here I am attempting to play this Boros Kellen Sword deck for the third time. I don't think it's a 9-in-1 deck, despite its performance. I don't. I hope it's not a 1-in-6 deck, uh, but this is a brew from that started in last format. Uh, it was just clearly not good enough. I've been trying to make Kellen work in standard for a little while. And it was clearly not good enough, not even good enough to like throw up on jank brewers and lose the whole time. Um, we, we brew jank here, but we we expect the jank to be decent enough that we're, you know, hopefully in that like two wins out of seven uh, at least category. Um, and so here we go. We're going to walk through Boros Sword, starting with Kellen the Fae Blooded, the uh, namesake card here. Kellen has uh, an adventure ability called Birthright Boon that we want to use a lot. Search your library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. Kellen uh, himself is a 2-2 two, two for 3 with double strike. Other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0 for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen the Fey Blood. So he's his own sort of combo here. Um, and we're going to go from Kellen to the targets for the Birthright Boon ability. Starting with the enchantments. So we have just a couple of enchantments here, but auras are are tutorable by Kellen, and we've got Draconic Destiny as a one of. This is an enchant creature where the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. It has flying haste and fire breathing, essentially. Pay one, creature gets plus one, plus zero to the end of turn. This works really well with Kellen, because if you've got a flying version that can pump that power up, uh, so it's got evasion and the ability to you know, at least in the following turn, go to... Sorry, my dog is trying to get in here. Uh, six double striking power in the sky is pretty cool, and hopefully you can go more than that by the time you've got it equipped to your Kellen. Um, we've also got in enchantments two copies of Ossification. I'm just going to let the dog in, or this is going to go crazy. <laughs> Sorry, dog. Two copies of Ossification. Um... Awesome that you can tutor this up. Tutoring removal is great whenever you can do it. And uh, we've got enough basics, hopefully, uh, in Plains and Mountains, 10 total, uh, that will hopefully have targets for ossification. So beyond the enchantments, we're, uh, we're looking at swords. And actually, we're going to start from the top. Like The most expensive thing we can tutor up is a dragon wing glider. There's just a single copy here because we are playing 23 lands. Not often that we want to get up to five mana and, and still have plenty of things left to do to win the game. So hopefully it's just this or bust. Um, but this becomes a 4-4 four, four flyer with haste, which we can tutor up off of Kellen. Uh, and then we'll skip to Sword of Forge and Frontier. It is the lesser of the swords in this deck, uh, but sometimes it's great. You get pro red, pro green, plus two, plus two. Uh, whenever a quick creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn. You may play an additional land this turn. Uh, so if you're dealing damage with Sword and Forge and Frontier, you're getting a solid bit of value out of it. And obviously, if it's equipped to Kellen, even better, because you got Double Strike going on there. Um, and we'll get to some other ways this deck can give creatures Double Strike uh, beyond Kellen. Uh, same thing with Sword of Once and Future. This is more what we want to be doing. If we're tutoring for a sword, this is probably the one that we're going for, unless we're playing against uh, you know, the red or green colors where we need the protection. Um, but we have a lot of one and two mana instants and sorceries in this deck, which we'll get to later. So this one gives us plus two, plus two protection from blue and black. And whatever equipped cre equip creature deals combat damage to a player, so well too. Uh, then you may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its cost. That spell would be put into your graveyard and exile it instead. So from here, we want to be replaying Lightning Helix. Lightning Helix was the card that I thought maybe makes this deck playable in standard uh, and so we're going go with the full four copies of it. We've also got Obliterating Bolt, we've got uh, a Braid, we've got uh, a Fateful Absence to Destroy Evil, a Flame Blast Bolt, Play with Fire. Uh, so a bunch of uh, little options for sort of once in future uh, that we're hoping to make use of. Onward with 
tutors. We can also tutor a Lizard Blade. Um, it's just a one of. It can give us double strike, obviously. Um, give a creature double strike. Uh, we have a Lion Sash. Um, I don't know how great this card is, but there are a lot of decks right now that are making use of graveyard strategies. So I think a one of is worthy of, a, of an inclusion. I don't think it's a great magic card otherwise. And if you're playing a best of three, this is probably one of the first that's going to come out in any deck that's not got a graveyard synergy. Um, then we're going to move on to arguably the best tutor options, uh, which will surprise you. Rabbit Battery uh, is low-key the MVP of this deck. So not only is it uh, a 1-1 one -one with haste, um, but it can reconfigure and give any creature for one extra red uh, haste, including Kellen, uh, anything else we got going on here. Um, but the reason why it's especially good is uh, Jorkadine. Jorkadine is a 2-2 two -two for 2 with Trample. It says when Jorkadine first Gold Warden attacks, it gets plus X, plus X until the end of turn where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then if Jorkadine's power is 4 or greater, draw a card. Uh, so if you have a Rabbit Battery in play... Jorkadine becomes a 3-mana, 4-4, four, four, trample, haste creature that draws a card when it attacks. That's what you want to be doing, full stop. Even considered adding a fourth copy of Jorkadine. Um, may do that at some point in the future. Uh, so Rabbit Battery pairs really well with that. Obviously with Kellen, you've you've got a 3-3 you know, three, three hasty double striker. Um, we have a single copy of Ar Archangel of Wrath here. I'm going to come back to this because this card in the first two uh, iterations of me playing through this was a different angel. Um but I think it needs the potential for lifelink. Um, and I just want to try this. We, we don't have any black mana. We're not going for it. So it's potentially a five drop that, that pings um, with a little bit of lifelink. Um, just testing out how it goes here. But Eater of Virtue is the other like grand slam of the deck because Eater of Virtue equipped to a rabbit battery gives you a 3-1 uh, attacker, much better than a 1-1. One, one. And if that rabbit battery were to die in combat, oh well, because the rabbit battery will then be imprinted on Eater of Virtue in the form of its haste will be added to Eater of Virtue. Eater of Virtue says as long as a card exile with Eater of Virtue has flying equip... Uh, um, <laughs> flying... I'm just going to read the card. Apologies. As long as a card exile with Eater of Virtue has flying, equipped creature has flying. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Protection, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. So the creature's going to get 2 plus 0, uh, plus 2 plus 0 when it's equipped, and then anything that dies that has the, uh, the text listed here is going to get imprinted on it such that when you equip Eater of Virtue to a new creature, it gets those static abilities, which is really great, especially for Rabbit Battery. Uh, notice that Jorkadine has Trample, so it would get that. We're playing four copies of Bloodthirsty Adversary because it pairs well with Lightning Helix and the rest of these instants and sorceries. So it would get Haste if it was equipped to a Bloodthirsty Adversary and it were to die. Uh, it would get Double Strike if Lizard Blades dies and it's equipped to it. Same thing with Kellen, would get Double Strike there. Um, we got this Archangel of Wrath, it would get Flying and Lifelink. This guy doesn't really count, unfortunately, because the creature itself is just a 2-2 for Mirrodin token, but pretty much everything that we've got that co could be equipped to Eater of Virtue gets, gets some sort of value there. So beyond that, we've got two copies of Wandering Emperor, just a good magic card overall. Um, and I think the plus one, plus one counters are more use useful in decks where we've got, you know, Kellen and, and Jorkadine um, and, you know, double striking Lizard Blades and things of that nature. Uh, again, this single copy of Archangel of Wrath. This was, I forget the name of the angel, but it was the angel that allows you to play uh, up to three mana cost stuff from your graveyard. Um, just out of curiosity, just seeing if it would work well with, with Kellen. Um, unfortunately, you couldn't use the adventure ability with Kellen. Um, and we just didn't as often have a need for that. So I think Archangel of uh, Wrath is going to be better. And uh, we've gone through the instants and sorceries. Oh, one last thing is the mana base. Uh, I think the mana base is the reason why this deck is never going to be a 9 and one deck, uh, despite that actually happening in um, Diamond. But the reason is we need a, we need the fast lands. We need um, untapped red and white sources early on, and because the red white fast land is not in standard, I think we're really going to struggle with doing exactly what we want to do when we want to do it. Uh, but we're playing twenty three lands here. Um, without further ado, let's see if we can go nine and one, or not go at least one and six. Improve. 
Skunky Herb. With the Oko. We will keep this. Despite not having an equipment for Jorkadine. As in this case, uh, the Restless Bivouac on turn one isn't too painful. Would be, of course, if we had Rabbit Battery, but... There's a play with fire. <laughs> Uh, and, and here's a great example, again, why that fast land would be so much better. Because we want to play this. We want to at least play an untapped land on turn two. But in order to do that with our current hand, we've got to play this on turn one, which means we can't burn out Evolve Sleeper. And I'd much rather burn out Evolve Sleeper. Or, or, I don't know, anything else that might happen to play this turn. But we're going to take two damage and have a card in our hand that we shouldn't, we would not if we had the, the fast land. Um... So I think the play here is just to run out Jorkadine. Could easily just get Liliana, which would be annoying. Um, but we've got to get our game in gear. And there's potential for us to, you know, draw an Eater of Virtue. Could just get cut down, too. Feels like that's likely to be the case. No, nope, no cut down. If we do get Liliana, we would play the Bloodthirsty Adversary, I think. Well... Depends on what we draw, I suppose. Virtue of Persistence. Well, we drew another Jorkadine. So we could burn off... Evolve Sleeper, or we could run out another Jorkadine. We're going to run out another Jorkadine. Note that we would still be at 20, not 14, if this Restless Bivouac had been a fast land. Another virtue. Really struggling with lands here. Um, I don't know how good Bloodthirsty Adversary even is on this board. So, unfortunately... I'm gonna wait and see what happens. I'm inclined to just play with fire here. Again, wish we could have done that six life ago. <laughs> The mana inefficiency is really tough, and continuing to not draw lands also really tough. I don't want to use a Fateful Absence on Preacher of the Schism, because I'd really need one if they play a Shieldred, which I'm sure they're playing with all those swamps over there. <clears throat> but now I'm probably going to do it. Because I don't want them getting extra cards off of it. There's a rabbit battery, but holy cow, do we we need to have a little bit more real estate in our portfolio here. We only have one card in the deck that deals with a resolved virtue of persistence. And recast it off Bloodthirsty Average River. We would need to draw it and three more lands. Um I'm just going to go ahead and abrade Gix. We are now out of ways to deal with Evolve Sleeper.
feel like we're pretty far behind here. And uh, with another Gix, really far behind. And just consistently not getting anywhere. <laughs> so, the likelihood of us going to 0-1 seems high. If they don't remove Rabbit Battery, we're not gonna block. So there's a removal for Rabbit Battery. I guess fortunately there's nothing for them to proliferate. But we're so far behind now, especially with Gix drawing a couple cards here. This, these swords are doing us no good. There's Liliana. Huh. When I win. I'm not even sure what to consider dumping here. Um, well, I guess it's sort of Forging Frontier because it doesn't give us relevant protection. We're never going to get to it. Ossification is a magic card that we can cast, and I'm going to do it because Gix get out of control otherwise. We're going to have to deal with Liliana some other way. We can at least, I don't know, burn some time, assuming we live long enough with a bloodthirsty adversary. Akhlazat's deepest betrayal, we straight up just can't beat from here. I think there's only one card that we could draw that removes it, and it's not Dragonwing Glider. Um, we could potentially live a turn, but all they have to do is uh, minus Lily, so we're going to concede. Never having drawn our third land. Alas. Oh, and one. <laughs> Back to the bottom of Diamond Tier 4. You can tell I was brewing with some other jank. Having at one point been 9-1, and one, we were on the verge of uh, Diamond 2. <clears throat> Aura Sword, Game 2. So we again have two lands. Our opponent's going first. Again, man, a fast land would make all the difference, whether it was the Battlefield Forge. I mean, really, in this case, if it was, if it was Sundown Pass, but uh, we'll see what we get. This is not a bad hand. We're up against Boros. Boros lands. Hmm. I don't remember having seen this. So, yeah. We're going to play the Sundown Pass first. I really wish we had a Rabbit Battery out there. Are you sure? I mean, th this is going to get real painful if... It wouldn't be in that much better of a situation if we had a Rabbit Battery out there. There would just be... They'd be at 19 instead of 20. I'm assuming they have some sort of removal. Um, I'm glad to just find out. It's gonna hurt. There's the lightning helix. I like lightning helix. I'll attack. Perhaps I should have. We're not going to block, but... And we are again stuck on two lands. 23 might not be the right number, but... It shouldn't be this extreme. Um, So we can play Lizard Blades, we can use a Kellen, thin the deck out a little bit. Uh, I think the play is to use a Kellen. We're going to go find ourselves a uh, Leader of Virtue. So at least we can get in the trade game. Warrior's Call. And now we can't remove these guys with Lightning Helix, which is a problem. And we are just struggling with the land. Um...
I'm gonna run out lizard blades and pass. At least lizard blades could equip an eater reverse you if they if they happen to like bash through or something. Um, or if Eater of Virtue just dies, or if Lizard Blades die, uh, dies with an Eater equipped, that's not bad. <clears throat> Dork again. If we just had one more land, we could at least be bashing. Um, alas, we cannot. And I don't know that I want to trade off one of these guys for Lizard Blades right now. So I think we're going to go here. And just continue lamenting not having a third land. Fortunately, we are so far not under a ton of pressure, but double War Leader's Call, I feel like we could just die to anything almost any time. Again, assuming they have some removal, but we're going to test a reconfiguring here. Hmm. Well, we are now going to reconfigure here. I forgot that guy can tap us down, but whatever. Uh, that's preferable to removal. <laughs> now we're getting removed. Man. I guess we could just play a Kellen. I mean, this is not going well for us at all, but it's not going especially well for our opponent. Do I even dump here? Like Lion Sash is not particularly good. Yeah, we're gonna dump Lion Sash. So I'm going to equip Rabbit Battery to Kellen. And Bash. Or attempt to Bash, yeah. We're going to get tapped down again, I imagine. Okay. But this does mean I'm going to Bash with Lizard Blades. Because if they block... Our first strike damage will happen. Then we can Lightning Helix this Walking Bulwark. Just do it now, I don't have any mana, so. So it'll die when first strike da damage takes place. No great victory there, but <laughs> this has been a pretty janky game so far. Kellen gets Lightning Helixed. They got another clock Clockwork Drawbridge taking damage okay we do have the means by which to do some things now they can't untap or they can't tap our dude down so we can eat a virtue equip to lizard blades and potentially offer that trade. Right now I think I'm fine with it because we're gonna also be able to kill in something afterwards and then Bloodthirsty Adversary. This is interesting. I might, I might, not be able to, might end up being able to get both of them as a result of this. Yeah, I think I'll wait then on... I think I'll obliterating bolt this guy. Um, and equip Eater to Rabbit Battery, which again, now thanks to the imprint ability, has Double Strike. It's a 3-1 Double Striker, so they have, they have to do something about that at the very least. Ooh, saucy. What in the world is this? Oh man, I think we just died. <laughs> Pretty close to just died. Um, yeah, this is a great combo.
And unfortunately, I don't think I have any way to deal with him, so we have probably died. Unless he just doesn't have any anything in hand. Or decides to attack us first or something like that. But he just plays something, we've died. And I don't think... Oh, uh, and we, we don't even have a basic land. So we, we could use Kellen to tutor up ossification, but we don't have a basic land. So we can't ossify this dude. So there's therefore nothing we can tutor up that's relevant enough. We can give him Sword of Fortune Frontier, which gives him pro red and green. Uh, which I guess there's a tiniest chance that we could... No, we still don't have enough, but... So and we're just going to bash here. I think we're fine with this. Double stray case. Um, yeah, I think we're fine with this. We're just going to trade. I mean, again, we're probably dead, but... Hmm. I'm not even sure what to do. If they play literally any creature, we have died. And we need to gain life. So, so I'm going to do an odd thing here. After combat, I'm going to play a Bloodthirsty Adversary. I'm going to activate it. And we're going to Lightning Helix them in the face. Hoping that they don't have another one of those dudes. Now we've died anyway because we get the like, double triggers on the birds. Well, not a good showing. <laughs> We're much closer to one and six than we are to nine and one. Uh, but in both games so far, I've desperately struggled to draw the third land. Mike Chen, the Shieldred Avatar. We again have two lands. We're keeping it. This is fine. It would be much better on the play. And here's why. Um, I'm just going to straight up Flame Blast Bolt this feel much better if we had a Lightning Helix, but I don't want to run the risk of them playing a one mana something or other, and then, yeah, that's fine. Uh, abrade, I'll probably still wait. I'm likely to abrade the Bloodthirsty Adversary, unless they play a land and play Squee, in which case he will get abraded. Reckless Impulse. Seems fine. Didn't hit a land. Hopefully that's what they were looking for. We will now abrade Bloodthirsty Adversary. Our opponent is stuck on lands. We will take that. Uh, we did not want to see the one of Dragonwing Glider. Not at this time. So we're going to grab a battery. And bash. Uh, and then we're going to kill him. And the question is, what are we going to kill him for? I'm somewhat inclined to get ossification. I'd... We end up getting into a race and we draw the extra land for Wandering Emperor. I feel like we can get to the damage we need by the time they can. The, the, the question is, like, do we end up ha giving them their value back by damaging Felden? This is the only way I know of to remove him. Okay, so there's another rabbit battery. Not the greatest, but I don't hate it. We're going to go ahead and ossify this fella. We may lament if we see a squee next turn. But we don't have too many ways to remove that guy without doing damage to him. Okay, so here the play is... Kellen equip rabbit battery.
They will have to remove Kellen, or this race goes by pretty quick, especially with Wandering Emperor. Um, a land gives us the opportunity to play Dragon Wing Glider. Mechanized Warfare, it's fine. Sure. Let's see if there's a way we can just win here. Reconfiguring would cost two. Not useful. Uh, so we could... Hmm, doesn't look like it. But I don't think that that matters. Probably just going to destroy evil this thing. Play the Lion Sash as like a chump blocker. So they have removal for Kellen. Faces Kakazan is fine, um, but now they're just dead to my janky turn play. So I can just bash with all these dudes, Flash Wandering Emperor, and pump the one. Either of the two that doesn't get blocked. Not a very impressive win against a deck that struggled to draw land as we have the last couple of games. But what can you do? One and two. Oros Kellen. Hanging out at the bottom of Diamond Tier 4. die. Well, either oh there we go well we have three lands and the very first time we've seen archangel of wrath jorkadine eater of virtue the things we can do here we don't have a single instant or sorcery to benefit bloodthirsty adversary but i'm not opposed to playing a bloodthirsty adversary on turn two in this case we will probably be playing the jorkadine on turn two Seeing if we can get some value off of that eater. I would like this hand much better on the play. On the draw, it lacks interaction. But I can hardly turn down an opening hand with three lands, given how much we've struggled to get three lands. Sleeves are these. Don't, I don't remember seeing this sleeve before. It's a fandom of something I don't know what it is. We keep seeing this one of Dragon Wing glider, glider that like we're supposed to just be tutoring up in the last case, last resort scenario. But uh, I feel like we may be, be playing um, Rafine. Or it could just be a uh, control deck. We're getting made to disappear. In that case, I regret a little bit not playing the Bloodthirsty Adversary. <clears throat> We're going to run out of the Bloodthirsty Adversary. And 
now I think there's an argument for having played Eater of Virtue on turn one um, rather than playing Sundown Pass. Again, Fast Lance would be would make this so much better because swinging for four here is preferable to swinging for two. We should be able to do if we hadn't resolved the Eater of Virtue on turn one. This was an untapped land, it'd be great, because I'd love to be able to Iganjo or uh, trade with Eater. Um, but we don't have that in the cards, so we're going to go here. something and in this case and the fact that we don't have any targets for sort of once in future is annoying um, but we don't have great options here we could get an ossification for that sword shark but they're probably going to get a lot of value of that sword shark anyway So um, the more powerful play here is just to get sort of a bunch of future. So that's what we're gonna do. I think I'm willing to risk. Removal, kind of like burning the turn here. As long as they don't exile Bloodthirsty Adversary, there's still some value to be gained here. Okay, we're getting abraded by our own abrade. Sad day. Well. That does mean they cannot abrade Kellen. I have some other removal for Kellen. They cannot abrade him. Make an argument for Dragon Wing Glider here. But I wanted to force them to sacrifice this incubator token if they happen to have another make disappear. Dragonwing Glider can be pretty good too. Uh, if I have the opportunity to resolve anything here, I'd rather it be this. They're probably removing anyway, but... The only, really, the only benefit we would get from trying Eater first is we would get to play Rabbit Battery here. But Rabbit Battery is pretty weak under the circumstances. And that's bad for us for sure. Rabbit Battery is weak under the circumstances because it's just a 1-1 one, one, and we already have um, Adversary imprinted on Eater of Virtue. So for one mana of any color, we can give a creature haste. Helix does not feel especially useful in this circumstance. Um, I think we run out of glider. Make an argument for playing Iganjo and equipping Eater of Virtue, but I might regret not doing that.
Yeah, so we, we need to be the aggressor until we're not against this deck for sure. But they're probably just going to remove this dude. <laughs> yeah. This throat has been gone for. They're going to be able to swing for a ton next turn. I'm going to put this out anyway. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Two turn clock. Like, we, we can't spend our time doing anything else other than trying to gain some advantage because we're pretty far behind on any sort of advantage. Just firing up those dudes. And bless bolt. Trying to find. We're gonna try this. Probably get countered. We're gonna think about it. We could try to go for Chrome Host Seed Shark with the Flame Blast Bolt. Or I could try racing. Let's try to get rid of the Seed Shark. <laughs> I don't know if this is right or not, but. Got yeah, the counter spell for that. Figure if they had a counter spell. I mean, I guess they might have had a negate or something. Or just removal. Bitter triumph. Yeah, so they're getting some more value out of Seed Shark before it dies. Pump up a dude. Taking eight, got a lot of things that need removing, and they're able to play Memory Deluge. We're way behind in this game. Fateful Absence does not feel especially good. Even even sort of once in future. Um, One probably won't even get equipped because he'll probably remove the rabbit battery. But even if it does, not a lot for us to do here. March of the Wretched Sorrow. Do I care if they gain six life? I mean, I'm not shooting my own guy because I'm dead on the, on the follow up regardless. So we're going to allow that to resolve. Probably end up lightning helixing something. I think if they fire up everything, we die regardless, but they may or may not do that. Thinking about it hard. Didn't fire up anything. Didn't even send. Well, um, yeah, we'll we'll try to elix here. Probably should have gone for a fateful absence on this guy, but I don't want to give him any more options. And if I see like a shield red or something, I'll be really upset. Okay, so lightning. Our Lion Sash does very little for us here. So I need to keep Fateful Absence up. 
Uh, so I guess we try to equip Sword of Once in Future to the Lion's Ash. <laughs> I mean, we were dead a long time ago, but our opponent hasn't been playing the best, perhaps? I think they should have won already, so maybe they'll fear something. Who knows? Definitely contemplating. Sure. Tempted to Faithful Absence now while well, they are untapped, but then they would just know that they win <laughs> by firing up dudes or Restless Reef, which has been hanging out there a bit. They have five of their own cards, one of ours. They're duressing us, so that's easy. We're going to go here now. Now it is it should be abundantly clear to our opponent, who has somehow made it to Diamond. Uh, that they have won. Shield received. Alright. Well, we'll concede there. Moving to 1 and 3. Definitely closer to uh, the 1 and 6 performance than we are to the 9 and 1 performance. So far, I'm flabbergasted after the 1 and 6 and then the start that we really did with 59 of the same 60 cards. Uh, go 9 and 1. I have untapped.gg evidence. It really happened. Ugh, okay, well this is not a keepable hand. We will keep this, and yet again, we've seen a Dragonwing Glider. 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 Like, we've seen as many Dragonwing Gliders as we have, like, basic lands. Skrelv. Not really what I want to see here. Which version? Okay, we're playing against Infect. Okay, so I think we're just going to hope that they don't remove the Jorkadine. Looking at it. Oh, man. Well, to draw land, we can do the thing, but we're so close to being dead uh, that drawing off Jorkadine probably isn't very helpful. So I think I think we play then we play Jorkadine and Rabbit Battery. Potentially uh, chumping with Rabbit Battery. Hey, I hate blocking these crawling choruses, but. Well, we're going to be doing it. Uh, unless they just. If they attack with all, we're definitely going to block, block Skrelv. Can this activate? Oh, God. <laughs> Ugh. Just, just a tap. No additional cost. Well, I feel like we're dead here already. Continuing to draw things that aren't going to help a bunch. Try removing the Skrelv. By throwing out another blocker, which I think is what we're going to do. Maybe I should have thrown away the rabbit battery to seed core anyway, but 
At least this gives me the option if they can't, if they bounce Jorkadine again, we have just straight up died. We have died. One and four now, I think? So we're very close to the one and six performance. Just eating up the bottom of Diamond Four. Really wondering how the heck nine and one happened. I, I wish I had streamed that despite the. Uh, Roof action, just so I'd have like video evidence. I want to go back and see like, did I did I comparatively get that lucky? Were my opponents that unlucky? It didn't feel like it. it felt like kind of normal magicking in diamond, but since going nine one, we've collectively gone like two and ten or something. Um, not the greatest hand. And I said again on the the draw. I feel like we. Maybe we just were on the play every time, and we had decent hands. I'd love to swap the Wandering Emperor for anything else. But, slam out Rabbit Battery. If nothing else, we can play and equip Rabbit Battery. Probably remove it, but we'll try that anyway. Prop should have just played a tap land. We're committed now, but wait for them to tap out and then, because it's just annoying we don't get to imprint Rabbit Battery that way, I just sort of waste our turn. We played against the blue-black control during the 9-1 run. Uh, let's see. Do I tutor something with Kellen? You know, I could tutor a rabbit battery. Play it, try to equip Eater of Virtue. Let's see what happens with that. Alternatively, I could wait to the end of their turn, try to flash Wandering Emperor, because if they allow that, interesting things happen. And if they don't, hopefully they burn their counterspell. It's odd to think I might rather have a Wandering Emperor countered than a Rabbit Battery. And if they fire up Restless Reef and attack with it... Sure. Sure. I hope you're ready to our, our chances just got a lot better here. My judgment is fine. Now we can kill him for a rabbit battery. Play the rabbit battery. We can equip the rabbit battery. We can plus onto the rabbit battery. Swing back for four. Remember your training. Happily. Maybe their hand is just so stacked that they didn't mind throwing away the render inert. Ooh. I guess that's that. Okay, ossification doesn't help a whole lot here. There's a little bit of a nombo going on in that. Having a plus one, plus one counter on a rabbit battery doesn't do us any good when we equip Kellen the Fae Blooded. Um, so I'm inclined to just bash here and again flashing on Wandering Emperor. It's probably better than Restless Bivouacking. Um, yeah, so we're going to do that. Sure enough, what you got? What do I have? Duress is where we flash in. Wandering Emperor. <clears throat> you can now resolve your duress. I've learned much during my travels. Let me show you.
Don't lightning helix me, bro. Hmm. I think I'm gonna plus on the rabbit battery. <laughs> it doesn't add as much damage to the board, but like if I can just get them to remove the rabbit battery, even with a lightning helix, uh, it does make. It, so it, it puts Wandering Emperor out of range. Well, they didn't do anything. I was thinking they'd try to remove rabbit battery somehow. Um, Yeah, I'm just going to bash with Rabbit Battery. Probably going to make a guy this turn. I, I might just soak in Zen at the end of their turn after making a dude. I feel like as long as I don't commit... Uh, as long as I just force him to remove Rabbit Battery. Cut down there. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Invasion. So that's what I expected when I saw Render Inert. If they have another Render Inert, um, this could be kind of bad. I'm going to dump a Braid just because Obliterating Bolt, if they happen to be able to remove these counters right now, Obliterating Bolt gets whatever they bring back. Uh, it also gets Kel. Uh, Sokens in. Yeah, we win that one. So, what was that, like two and four? <laughs> Creeping off the bottom of Diamond Tier 4. Uh, we, are, we are technically between one and six, and nine and one, which is where I expect it to be, but... Not very encouraged. Our, our best finish out of seven, if we win this game, is three and four. We're playing against the Master Beta. That's going to be tough. Master Beta with an LS Norn avatar. And we are here regretting lack of fast lands already. And we're again on the draw. I wonder how many of these we've been on the draw. I, I don't even, I don't recall having been on the play. Um, but this is a fine-ish hand otherwise. And we've, we're seeing Spara's headquarters turn, turn one. So I think in this case, we're going to Battlefield Forge play our rabbit battery if they're on domain we want to be as aggressive as we can be yeah looks like we're on domain <clears throat> or they're on domain uh so hmm. yeah we're just gonna run out another rabbit battery bashing with hasty one one They probably have the Flash Enchantment for removal. Um, they want to use that on a Rabbit Battery. Fine. Can't play anything and equip it off of Kellen out. Anyway, we're not going to run Kellen out here. So we're going to bash first. Then we're going to go. We're going to tutor up our friendly neighborhood Virtue. Eater. Eater of the Virtues. We're gonna play it. <clears throat> Maybe that draws out an enchantment removal. There we go. Ley line binding. Getting Eater of Virtue. Evasion is bad. It could just play an Atraxa <laughs> and we die. Uh. This is a really risky play to run out Kellen. Uh, but we're going to do it anyway. I don't think this game gets much better for us the longer it goes. So, here we go. We'll 8 you. Here it's 7. Don't board wipe us, bro. We technically... Okay. Well, I 
We can ossify that dude. I don't really want to. So I think we're going to abrade play with fire that dude. Because, oh man, if they, you know, if they hadn't done that right there, if they'd done anything, I was just thrown out a blocker, we would have had them dead from direct damage. Which is, is a real sad state of affairs here. So we're going to uh, just abrade and play with fire that guy and bash. Really, it's just because without ossification, like, we can't beat an Atraxa. So if they Atraxa us, um, none of the rest of the stuff matters. We'd have to win that turn or have a way to remove Atraxa. So we're going to hope we win this turn. Uh, they could also just play the the uh, Domain spell, which would be hard for us to deal with here. We would need yet another uh, Lightning Helix. But right now, like, uh, another Lightning Helix... Feels kind of decent. Um, we might want to risk it now. We'd only be putting them to seven, so right back in the same sort of spot. Uh, but I, I think we just gotta we just gotta go for it. It could be. I can think of a bunch of reasons. In fact, I don't want to do this, but it's too late. They could just ley line binding, get that dude back. So there's the landline line binding. They get the dude back. They get another. Land off of it. And again, we're going to put him to eight. We could remove the topiary stomper with our other lightning helix. But I feel like our only play here is. Hope they don't draw Traxa. Cast the lightning helixes to the dome. Uh, and either get another Lightning Helix or uh, an Adversary. If they, if they play a Traxa here, yeah, we, we're dead now anyway, unfortunately. Uh, unless we just get crazy lucky. Uh, I, can't, I can't even think of something that would be lucky enough. Um, because we cast the Play with Fire earlier. Now they would have to do... Yeah, so that's going to put them to 10, which is too far away. Hmm? And in, in doing this, they're going to be able to activate herd migration. So we are straight up dead. Uh, anything I can think of. I mean, we actually drew the other Lightning Helix. <laughs> oh, man. Well. We fought valiantly. There's the herd migration. We, we were too far away anyway, but uh, maybe maybe if we hadn't tried to get the Topiary Stomper, I don't know. I'll take responsibility for that loss, but uh, yeah, two, two and five. After a nine and one and a one and six, two and five. So it sounds like we're closer uh, to one and six <laughs> than nine and one for sure. Let's take a glance at this deck before we wrap up. The swords always felt like we literally we did nothing with the swords. Like we never tutored the sword and did the thing. Um, we were always susceptible to removal. Jorkadine, even we had the opportunity. I feel like we did better with the Jorkadine rabbit battery combo in the one and six run than we did today. Um, almost nothing about this felt good like it did in that nine and one run. Um, right now, I'm inclined to just uh, scrap it revisit it later perhaps but one thing i'm noticing about this uh standard format is i'm seeing a lot of cheap removal and that makes me want to brew a creatureless deck so we're probably going to move on to that uh i've already been working on versions of calamity uh red calamity for a while uh well, i guess it's invoke calamity uh red invoke <laughs> for a while uh 
I had a cool version back when Invoke Despair was not banned. Uh, I've been trying to build something since. So if anyone watches this and has interest in the deck, let me know what you would change about it. If you'd like janky brews, whether they win or lose, feel free to like the channel and subscribe and stuff. See you next time.